Yo, what is going on guys? It is Chris and today I'm going to be doing a review of the brand new Scuf Vantage controller for PlayStation 4. Now this controller, I got it about a week ago. I got it around Monday and this is Scuf's uh, upgraded version, their sort of updated version of their previous controller that they had for PlayStation 4, which is the Scuf Impact. Now, there's quite a few similarities, and there's a few things that are different between the two controllers, and when getting used to this controller, uh, it's a little different compared to using the Scuf Impact. And so I kind of felt that I wanted to make a review for those who may be upgrading from a Scuf Impact to a Scuf Vantage, or they're considering that, or they don't have a pro controller uh, in the likes of like say an Xbox Elite Pro Controller for the PlayStation 4 and it's something that they were interested in. So what this video is going to be is sort of a two-part review. So I'm going to be doing a long-term review of the Impact Controller, which I've had this controller for about a year now. And this controller, which I've had for about a week, I'm going to be going over my short time that I've had with this controller and sort of compare it to uh, what I felt with the Impact Controller. So. Fair warning, this is going to be a pretty long video, so if you don't want to watch the entire uh, video and you just want to get my overall thoughts on the controller and how they feel and my recommendations, feel free to skip to this uh, time in the video. Still with me? Alright, cool. So, I'm going to start off by looking at the Scuf Impact controller and its features. The Scuf Impact is a modified DualShock 4 controller uh, which uses the same exact internals as DualShock 4 but it changes out the shell a bit um, in order to accommodate for Scuf's paddles. Now the Scuf paddles are Scuf's claim to fame and are the re main selling point of this controller. So as you can see, this comes with four paddles on the back, which interact with four different buttons that are placed under the paddles. And these buttons uh, allow you to press the four face buttons on the controller, and they're also remappable if you so wish. Now the thumbsticks on this controller are slightly different from a standard DualShock 4 controller. And as you can see, there are rings around the thumbsticks which are actually locking rings, which can twist and come off, which allow you to change out the thumbsticks. Now, this is in case your thumbstick wears out or in case you just want to change out your thumbstick for a longer one or a shorter one. Now, the thumbsticks that come with the Scuf Impact, if you decide to buy it, now these ones are the concave, and I chose these. You can also get domed thumbsticks or you can stick with the standard uh, PlayStation 4 or DualShock 4 thumbsticks. However, you can see these have been a little slightly worn out. However, I have slightly changed my thumbsticks uh, while I was using the controller because I wanted to find something that was a little bit more comfortable for me. But as you can see, I actually changed these thumbsticks again and these thumbsticks are the standard thumbsticks for the Scuf Vantage. And now they're slightly textured and I kind of prefer these. They're also slightly shorter than the ones that come with the Scuf Impact. Now the last thing that is sort of important with this controller is the customization options for the cosmetics. Now this is an entire blue controller. I got the blue face plate and the blue buttons, the blue triggers. And this is something that you can get when you're ordering the controller. Now if you just wanted a plain controller, you have that option. But unfortunately, if you wanted to change some of these things down the line, you weren't able to. So if you wanted a personalized uh, Scuf Impact, that's something that you're going to have to get when you're buying the controller. So the Scuf Vantage is in many ways a marginal upgrade from the Scuf Impact controller. Now, as you can see, it still has the four paddles on the back side of the controller. And these four paddles, again, map to the four face buttons and that comes standard with the controller. However, which comes standard with this controller is a remapping option. So as you can see here, there's a switch on the bottom of the controller 
And once you flip that switch over, it allows you to remap any of the paddles to any other button on the controller by holding those two buttons simultaneously. And this also applies to the brand new side buttons, which Scuff calls their sax button. So you have one on both sides of the controllers. Now, unlike the Scuff Impact, one of the brand new features that comes with the Scuff Vantage is the ability to remove the faceplate. Now, this also has cosmetic options, but it also allows you the free access to change your thumbsticks. You can also change your D-pad. And what's interesting about this control is you also remove the rumble pack. So if you didn't want to have your rumbles in previous scuff controllers, you had to remove them uh, when you're ordering it. This time, you can remove them as you see fit. So if you didn't want your rumbles in once, you can take them out. And then if you want them back, you can put them back in. In addition, the side buttons, if you found that they were uncomfortable to use, you can also remove these as well to give you a more traditional controller look. Now with the triggers, these come standard with trigger stops. So as you can see here, there's a little wheel that you can turn. And what this does is decreases or increases the amount of travel that the trigger has. And the actual triggers themselves are also removable and you can add those longer trigger options. Now here are the customization options that come uh, standard with every scuff vantage. So as you see here, this is a slightly longer thumbstick and it's also a dumb thumbstick. So that's something that you prefer using. That's an option. There are also the longer triggers that you can use. And these rings are the anti-friction rings that come standard with the controller. Now I have the black rings on here. Uh, it comes um, stock with the yellow rings, but the black rings come in the box. I put them in because I kind of like how the black rings look. Now, you also get a rounded uh, D-pad. Uh, I don't really have a use for this, but uh, that's an option in case that's something that you wanted to use. Um, again, I could never really find a use for it. Now, this is a key that you can also use to re uh, restart your controller. And on the triggers, I actually have these removed, but there are screws inside of the triggers that allow you to adjust the tension of the actual trigger. So you can have a shorter tension or a longer tension trigger. Now, side by side, the Scuff Impact and Scuff Vantage have a few similarities, but I wanted to talk about some of the main differences with these controllers. Now, a lot of these differences are cosmetic, but there are some that affect the way that you play. So uh, the way that the Scuff Impact thumbsticks are laid out is they're sort of offset. So the top thumbstick, the left thumbstick, is in the top left side of the controller, while the uh, right thumbstick is the bottom. Whereas on the Scuff Impact, because it is a DualShock 4 modified controller, the thumbsticks are both in line with each other. So if you're used to the DualShock 4 controller, uh, the Impact might be a little bit more comfortable for you to use uh, with the thumbsticks. However, if you are somebody who's more comfortable to using an Xbox 360, an Xbox One controller, or even the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, those all have the offset thumbstick, so that might be more comfortable for you. So turning these controllers around, you get to see a bit of how the backs differ from the controllers. Now, with the Scuff Impact controller, the way the paddles are laid out is there's a little bit more room, and the overall controller is a little bit wider. So if you have larger hands, this might be a factor here. I find these paddles a little bit easier to hold, um, especially with the grips, the way they're laid out. Uh, the Scuff Vantage is a little bit more smaller. It's a little bit more narrow, and the paddles are a little bit more recessed. So it's a little bit slightly harder to reach, but it's still pretty comfortable after I got used to it over a few days. So that's just something to keep in mind um, if you're looking at these controllers and how they might help them, how they might hold in the hand. Another thing to keep in mind with these controllers is the Scuff Vantage comes stock with the triggers, 
And with my scuff impact controller, I actually didn't go for the trigger stops. I didn't really find a use for them, but that is an option that's available for the scuff impact controller. If that's something that you were interested in, I didn't find a use for it and I don't really use the trigger stops. So that doesn't really apply to me, but, uh, that's mo that's mainly the, uh, cosmetic differences between the two controllers. All right, so as you guys have seen, there's a few things that are similar between these two controllers and there's a few things that are different about these controllers. A lot of those fall down to cosmetics. Uh, the main thing with the Scuff Impact controller, this is the Scuff Impact controller, this is the Scuff Vanish controller. I don't know why I keep mixing these two controllers up, but yeah. So, with the Scuff Impact controller, as you see it here, this is basically all that you get when you get the controller. So if you wanted a blue controller or a red controller, or you wanted blue buttons, red buttons, pink buttons, that's something that you would have to get while you're ordering the controller. And the same thing for some of the other features. So this controller can have trigger stops, it can have remapping, and it can also have a circular d-pad this is not the d-pad this is the d-pad so it could also have a circular d-pad however those are things that you would have to order when you're getting your controller and it's a custom made controller so there's a bit of a lead time there so it can take about two to three weeks depending on uh the availability so that's something to keep in mind if you actually wanted this controller and if you wanted to get more of those customization options the price that you're starting to look at with this starts to go up from there with the Scuff Vantis controller, there's a lot more that's customizable, but there's actually a few things that aren't really customizable. So the buttons actually are something that you can't change. So you can't change the color of these buttons and you actually can't change the color of the top triggers or the uh, the start and share buttons. However, the as I've shown before, the faceplate comes off the actual triggers come off, the sax buttons come off. There's a lot of things that come off and those things that come off are available to be changed whenever you feel like it. So if you wanted to get a different color faceplate, you can order that and then swap it out yourself. Same thing for the buttons, the triggers, etc. Anything that you can change on this controller, you can change whenever you want. It's not something that you would have to go and send your controller back to scuff for. So that's kind of one of the good things about this controller. One of the things that I really like about this controller, even though there's a few things that you really can't change, but those are really all cosmetic. The thumbsticks might be more of a performance upgrade and the same thing for like the triggers or the D-pad. That's again, that's something that then boils down to personal preference. So I spent a lot of time talking about some of the cosmetic differences between the Scuff Impact and the Scuff Vantage controller. However, once I've gotten some time to actually play with the controller, I've got to notice some things that affected the performance of both the controllers. So, as I'm going to show here, I actually have some gameplay footage of me testing out the controller. Okay, so what you guys are seeing here is some gameplay that I recorded. And what I'm trying to do here is test the input delay between the Scuff Vantage and the Scuff Impact in wireless mode. Now, the bo these both controllers are wireless and the wired versions obviously will have a much shorter delay, but when I was using the Vantage wirelessly, it felt like there was a lot more delay or noticeably more delay in input than the Scuff Impact. And I thought it was the input delay, but what turned out to be uh, something completely different and I wasn't really expecting this. So what I found is that the dead zones that are set on the thumbsticks of the Scuff Impact tend to, it feels like it's slightly higher than the Scuff Impact. Now, it's hard to tell in this footage, but if you look at the Scuff Impact, it's reacting a little bit more quickly and it doesn't take as much of a input from the thumbstick to get the camera to move, but it feels with the Scuff Vantage that I have to put in a little more effort to get it to move at the same rate as the Scuff Impact. 
So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking into these controllers. So if you made it to this part of the video, you want to know what I think about the Scuf Vantis controller compared to the Scuf Impact controller. I kind of just want to talk about how I feel about the Scuf Impact and kind of see how that translates to the Scuf Vantage. So when I first got the Scuf Impact controller, the first thing I thought to myself was this was an actually comfortable controller with paddles on the back of it. I've used multiple different Scuf controllers from Xbox 360 to PS4 for the original PS4 uh, Scuf controllers, the Xbox Ones, and a whole bunch of different other pro controllers. I've used the Dacon Revolution 2, and I've used the Xbox Elite controller with the Scuf paddles on the back. So this Scuf controller is probably one of the most comfortable uh, controllers that I have used, period. And that's a lot to that's a lot to take in when you're thinking of actually upgrading from your current controller. Like if this there's, there's nothing really wrong with this controller, so why would I feel the need to upgrade? So, you know, I like the way that the sticks feel, although like the current sticks that came with the controller weren't that comfortable. I didn't really like those that much. But being able to switch the sticks out, that's something that's easy to be done. Now Going to the Scavantage controller, I'm going to be completely honest, it was a, there was actually like a slight learning curve that I had with this controller. Um, with the dead zones in the thumbsticks being slightly larger, making my aim in game feel not as, uh, not as crisp as I would want it to be, to the grip of the controller being slightly smaller than what I'm comfortable with, with the Scuff Impact. Um, but over time, this was something that I started to get used to, like even the side buttons. I didn't really like these side buttons at first. I took them completely off, uh, for a while. And then I just decided, you know, I really wanted to do an, like a thorough review of this controller. So I put the, uh, the buttons back on. And what I actually did was I remapped the, uh, trigger buttons, the R1 and R2 to the side buttons. So now... When I'm playing in game, I use R2, R1 for my aiming and shooting for first person shooter games. And then I just use the side buttons for my R1 and R2. And I don't have to move these fingers really at all. Like I don't have to move them up. They just stay here. And then I keep my hands on the pal. So my fingers really aren't moving. So uh, that was something that I kind of liked about, you know, getting used to these the the control into the side button so I like that now the overall controller and overall feel of this controller is really solid and I really like it and uh, it's something that you know coming from the scuff impact this is something that I see as a you know it's a good upgrade if you if you have a scuff impact and it gets to the point where it's not really working anymore and you kind of just want to get a new controller if you have the availability to get a scuff vantage is something you can go to the store you can go to a gamestop or at eb games and just pick one up you don't have to order it through scuff so that's an option that you have if you wanted to upgrade or replace your old controller now getting into my overall opinion on the scuff vantage and what i recommend it it's an expensive controller so I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. If you have a regular DualShock 4 controller, that's what you mainly play on. You don't really play a lot of games competitively and not really a hardcore gamer, then there's no real reason why you should go get a Scuf Vantage. If you are a professional gamer, you play like you say Call of Duty or Destiny 2 or any game where there's like a competitive uh scene around it Fortnite, you know if you play any of those games and you're really serious about your gameplay then um this is something that you would probably consider um granted it is look like, like i said the wireless version is 200 dollars. the wired version is 170 dollars. so you know you have to take that into consideration if that's something that you think you you would get benefit out of that so that's up to you um, 
you know, I really like this controller and I see myself using this long term. So, you know, that's how I feel about this controller. So, you know, it's something that's not necessary to have, but it's something that I really like having. So there you go. Those are my opinions on the Scuf Vantage and how I compare that to the Scuf Impact. This is still a really good controller. And if you really don't want to spend the $170 on the Scuf Vantage, you don't want all of those features, you can probably just go ahead and grab a Scuf Impact um, depending on where you get it. You could probably get it for, you know, like $50 less than what you would pay for a Scuf Vantage and, you know, you still have that option there. But again, these are still pretty expensive controllers, but, you know, the Scuf Impact is still a good option if you don't feel like spending the extra money for the Scuf Vantage and you don't need all those features. So that's my review on the Scuf Impact and Scuff Vantage. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like. And as always, this is Chris, and I'll see you later. Oh my gosh. So this video is probably going to go up. I'm recording this Sunday. I've been trying to record this for like the past three days. This video is probably not even going to go up until like Tuesday because I have to do the editing. But oh my gosh. It's been a, it's been such a process trying to get back into like doing an actual video recording. I just really wanted to do a review because I felt like I wanted to do it. So that's the only reason why I did this. But oh my, oh my gosh, dude, this is a reminder of like why I don't make many videos anymore. This is actually, this, this takes a lot of energy to do. Oh my goodness. <laughs>